Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck. And this is the Thunder Show, AKA WLTV, and we've got a tremendous show for you. One, because I've done a whole lot of drinking of wine today, and it's now Thursday, AKA Monday. And two, because we have a subject matter that I really wanna talk to you about, one that I think is extremely important, and I'm gonna knowledge you up. You can friend me up while I knowledge you up. And here's what I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about Bourgogne Pinot Noir. Bourgogne Pinot Noir is Pinot Noir from the Burgundy region of France, and because it's called Bourgogne, it can really come from any part of the region. Uh, usually not from the top vineyards, of course, because these wines are fairly inexpensive. Once more expensive than New World Pinot Noirs, the craze of sideways in Hollywood has accelerated the price. Go figure, in America, Hollywood has made something go up in price unheard of. Who started the wristband thing? Probably a couple cool MBA guys, and now we're, actually it's costing us money, we're giving these away for free. And if you want one of these, Mott, link them up to the Gary has one last thing to say, they can fill out the form. If you want a free wristband, we're gonna give you one. You might have missed the whole GaryIsSorry.com thing, so we're gonna hook you up with that. But send in a picture, Mott just reminded me. Send in a picture, folks. So, Hollywood has raised the price of California wines in a major way, and what it has created is, and I couldn't even imagine if the dollar had some guts behind it, a little butt behind it, because right now it's really weak and making these wines a little more expensive than they would normally be, but Bourgogne Pinot Noirs are ranging in that 17, 15 to $25 range from tremendous producers who really know what they're doing. And I actually am thinking that Bourbon Pinot Noirs are now some, becoming some of the more value-oriented Pinot Noirs in the world, which is just dumbfounding and shocking to me, but we're gonna find out if that's true. We've got four different Bourgogne Pinot Noirs in front of me. I'm excited about this show, and let's jump immediately into it. And what we're starting with is the Catherine and Claude Marshall Bourgogne Pinot Noir 2005, which is a much heralded, much excited about, much talked about, much buzzed about, much hyped up vintage in Burgundy. And this wine is 20 US dollars and that's a nice, fair, round $20 bill, and so that should be really interesting. Let's give this a nice little whirl, and a little rinse. Now, the Pinot Noirs from Burgundy tend to be a little bit different than the ones we see from California and Australia uh, and many other places because they tend to be a lot more earthy and more controlled, a little more soil-driven, a little more, you know, of the terroir, as they like to say, and so I, I think it's imperative to respect these wines for what they are and understand these wines for what they are, and they are different. They're not strawberry jam for the most part. They're much more dirty and stinky and manure oriented. You know, you gotta really stick your nose in the horse's ass. That's the kind of wines you get with this. And let's see if that's the case. Now the Marachal has is, is got a very nice nose. Beautiful strawberry jam. Very clean, beautiful nose, wow. As you know, I'm all about the aromatics and this wine is aromatically exceptional. I get a little hint of a uh, little forest, little forest action, little green action, but not minty, just leafy, and uh, definitely some strawberries coming through, beautiful strawberries, not nor or earthy at all, um, or dirty or poopy as you'd normally expect. Let's give this a whirl. Now Pinot Noir has become a huge deal in America and people are always looking for good quality, inexpensive Pinots. Now all these range from 18 to 23, so I would not call them inexpensive. However, I'd call them fair to upper fair and, and I'd call them wines that you can definitely pop on the weekends. So this first wine is very interesting. I, I get a little cellar dust, concrete aspect. Very nice, dry, concentrated flavor. I get little hints of raspberry and raisin, actually, which you kind of reserve for Amarone, but for some reason this is popping a little raisin. Very light, not too heavily raisiny. I, I get a nice leafiness again. I'm going with some sort of greenness coming through. I'm getting a... I wouldn't say grassy, but it was almost like a fresh lawn component mixed in with cherries, mixed in a little bit with a nice, solid, acidic tannin function on the mid palate, 
leaning towards the finish, but very smooth on the finish. This is a very interesting Bourgogne Pinot. I like this wine. I'm gonna score this wine 88 points. Solid, good old fashioned Pinot Noir. Nothing too exceptional, not go run out and get, but definitely something you could seek out. Uh, I, I like it, it's very perfumey. A little violet coming through on the finish. Not bad at all. Good start, good solid start. Not too exceptional, but a good solid start. Let's get into the next wine. And this is the Don John Bertho 2005 Domaine du Moulin Neuf Bourgogne Pinot Noir, 18 US dollars. And the Bertho is a, a very small producer. We've not done a lot with this. I've never had a wine from this producer before, so I'm excited about that. 18 US dollars is a very fair, nice number. This has got a little bit less of a color than the last wine. This is actually much, much lighter than the first wine, which is good. Pinot Noirs tend to be lighter. Pinot Noirs have very, very thin skins. They're very difficult, fickle grape to work with. That's why you have to be a really great in the vineyards and a great winemaker. Pinots are tough, no doubt, wines to work with. Now this has a different component. Now this has more of a old barnyard smell to it. Uh, like not the actual barnyard term like poop, but actually like a barnyard, like the wood is rotted. You could tell there was pigs in there 30 years ago. There's cobwebs, there's a couple mice running around. Kind of very, very, very barn, barn oriented. This smells like a barn. Um, it also has, and I know this could come off a little vile, but it's just what it is, it does smell a little bit like throw up. You know, classic, you know, third grade, somebody ate too much, they threw up in class, that smell, it's almost like a, that acid, I guess, from the stomach. I mean, I'm, I know I'm going on here a little bit, and you're like, everybody's like, I am not buying this wine. I understand, good for you, fine, but that is what this is smelling like. It's turning me off a little bit, not too much. The first bouquet was probably more popular amongst most people, but this is intriguing. Let's give it a whirl. Usually they taste much better than they smell. Very basic Pinot Noir flavor. Um, very dry and bitter, bitter tannins, um, which is really gonna turn a lot of people off on this wine. A little thin, not as complex as I'd like to see from, from Pinots. I don't mind the thinness because Pinot comes with that territory, but. Yeah, the bitter tannins and then a little heat. This is not for me. I'm, I'm gonna score this wine 83 points. Big up to former Jet Santana Moss. Um, yeah, not for me. Uh, you know, it finishes so poorly that I just can't see a lot of people liking it. But the reason I gave it 83 points, which is not the worst score in the world, is there's some nice components to it. The strawberry's qu quite nice. Um, it's got decent mouthfeel. It's just where it goes at the end is just unacceptable. Like you know, like a, like a like an average movie that you're like, all right, I can kind of get through this, and then it just, it finishes so poorly, you're like, why did I waste my last two and a half hours? You know what I'm talking about. You know, so, it's kind of where it's at. Robert Arnault, 2004, Pinot Finn, Bourgogne, 23 US dollars, 85 points, Allen Meadows, and Robert Arnault is one of the great producers of Burgundy red wines in the world. Just a tremendous producer. I'm a big, big fan. And uh, this is their entry level uh, Bourgogne, 23 bucks. So 20, as you can tell, a very serious producer of $23 is the entry into the fray of their products. Let's give this a smell. Now this is more up my alley. You know I like the vegetal on the nose. And this is very vegetal and very barnyardy. This is like going to the Belmont and hanging out where the horses are prior to the uh, big race while nibbling on celery and then sticking the residue of the celery up your nose. That's exactly what this wine smells like and I like that. There's people that won't though, so you've gotta know what you're getting yourself into with this wine. I get a little horseradish aspect on this nose which is, in is just blah, 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 extremely enchanting and intriguing to me. Something that I'm very fond of, horseradish, is coming through extremely obvious on this nose, uh, mixed in with some sand aspect, uh, which I like. Uh, so this is very up my alley. I like the nose quite a bit. Let's give it a whirl.
This continues to be very vegetal, very dry, austere. Um, tastes like biting a shoe, uh, a shoe that has mud and poop mixed in, and maybe like a carrot stuck in it. No, a celery stick. I mean, this is. This is that kind of wine. This is Burgundy at its finest. This is not going to confuse you and think that you're drinking New World Pinot Noir, but you know you're drinking Old World Pinot. I give it up, big ups to Arnaud to sticking to it real, keeping it real. You know, this is kind of like the rapper that left the hood, but kept it real. Even though he made a couple bucks and got famous, like Arnaud, still making the style that's true from the streets. Feeling that vibe, that's what this wine is doing. I respect that, I like that, and most importantly, I like wines like this. These are not for everybody. New World fans, take your loud clothes, and your cape, and your hoopla, and your noisemakers, and all that jazz, and lots of loads of candy, take them and leave the room, because we're smoking pipes and reading dictionaries tonight with this old wine. I like this wine, this is up my alley. I think Alan Meadows missed the boat on this wine. He's too low at 85. I'm gonna go 89 plus on this wine. It doesn't have the oomph and the excitement to push it over 90 for me, but at 23 bucks for entry level Bourgogne, you know what, screw that. I'm going 90 points in this wine because I like it a whole, whole lot. And most of all, just to show how stupid points are, there's at least six or seven viewers now that wouldn't have bought it if I said 89, but are gonna buy it now that are 90. And when you do drink it, email me, gary at winelibrary.com, and tell me, Gary, I'm one of those jerk offs, I mean, cool guys, that would have not bought it at 89, but did buy it at 90, and this wine rips it up. So if you know you like old world stuff, and you don't wanna pay 70 bones for real Pinot Noir from the old country, then seek this out, because it's bringing the thunder. Jack. Let's move on. I said Jack for Richard Pryor. He used to always say in his jokes, Jack, and I'm a huge Pryor fan. Patrice Rion, 2005, Bourgogne Pinot Noir, 22 US dollars, and what do we have here but a screw top? In Burgundy, what's gonna happen next? Is the president gonna get a mohawk? Times are uh, changing. This is great. Give it up for Patrice Rion for changing the wine world. You know, he's helping us out. Screw tops. If you think screw tops are not cool and not great for the wine drinking experience, turn off the computer now and leave. But then come back, because I like I like people and I want everybody here. All right, let's give it a sniffy sniff. A little bit more fruit forward than the, than the others. Uh, this is a little bit new world in its approach on the nose. Yeah, I'm getting a little strawberry candy kind of aspect. I'm getting cotton candy on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Amazing how different wines can be. This is gonna be Supler, 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 S-U-P-L-E-R, popular amongst the Pinot Noir fans from California. Clearly Patrice Rion is going for that new world aspect in the, uh... yeah. Definitely going for it in the old world, going for new world flavor. Some oak clearly going on, issues going on here. I'm not gonna say the oak monster, but there's vanilla, almost like Cabernet quality, Shiraz quality flavors coming through in this wine. It's a very new world Pinot Noir. Anybody that's all about the Costa Browns and the sea smokes and all that should seek this out. There's nothing wrong with that. This is from a different part of the world coming with that. Not as over the top as what we're getting down home in Cali, but. As far as Pinot Noir from the old country goes, this is extremely radical. This is like. David Beckham coming to the United States and playing soccer. That'll never happen. Why would he ever do that? So, you know, this is a new world ride. It's got a tremendous amount of cherry, cotton candy, very strawberry oriented, uh, almost like a strawberry shortcake ice cream, co which I love, by the way. Those are delicious, especially eating the outskirts where it's all the vanilla and the sugar. Love that. Very well made, though. Very well structured. Very complete, compact. I love the fact this wine goes from 
first attack on the flavor profile to a very firm and focused mint palette to a very smooth and luxurious finish. This wine is made like it's from California, but tastes like a lot of the $35, $40 Pinot Noirs from California with a little less oomph. You know, it's like a good solid boxer that doesn't have the knockout punch. That's what this is. But there's a lot of Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker had that and he rocked it out. Great boxer. I like this wine. Um, it's not what I expected. Uh, I don't like that it's not true to its area. I don't. But, you know, sometimes I listen to a little Jay-Z too. And I'm going to root for this wine. I'm going to score this wine 90 points as well because it is what it is. I like it. I find it tasty. And tasty goes a long way because at the end of the day, anything you put in your mouth, you'd want it. You know, we can get technical on your ass all you want, but tasty is good. And this is tasty. And the last two Pinot Noirs, though extremely different, are extremely good and both merit 90 point scores for me. I'm going to stand up and cheer for them. And that's where it gets interesting because this could be, in my opinion, the best $45 education on wine that you could ever contribute to. These wines are totally different from the same area. Are they the same vintage? From, no, 104, 105. But they are very, 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 very different, yet they both bring the thunder. A tremendous opportunity, Vaniacs, to try something in this area. Um, really cool. Please check your local stores, restaurants, see if you can find these wines. Um, they are definitely worth picking up and trying head-to-head -head on a weekend where you're gonna splurge, you know, it's 50 bones, it's a lot. But heck, a couple of people do a crap movie costs that much these days. Especially, do you know how much popcorn costs? I paid like 19 bucks the other day. Anyway, question of the day. How many Pinot Noirs from France have you had? Tell the darn truth. Because you, with a little bit of me, we are, my friends, we are. We're changing the wine world.